Welcome to module 1.2. In this lesson we'll be working with views and also creating user sections. In this module you will learn the essential skills to open a model from an architect, create plans, sections and elevations and take measurements from the model. These are essential skills for a structural engineer prior to commencing the concept design of a structural frame. This tutorial can be completed with the trial version of Revit 2021 and it doesn't require any additional data sets. Let's start by opening up our previous view which was our sample technical score current M. You should notice that it's in the recent file list. Okay, so once the view opens up, we're now going to focus in on the navigation of the views in the project browser. The project browser is a key tool to be able to browse through the entire Revit project. You can see here that we have a top level folder called Views All, and then we have things like floor plans, seating plans, 3D views, elevations, sections, and so on. These are obviously traditional views that we'd expect in Revit, but then we have other things such as legends, walkthroughs, renderings, drafting views, schedules, and also the physical drawing sheets themselves. So we're going to now learn how to navigate through the views. So I'd like to start by taking a look at the floor plane 02 floor. So here we can just simply double click on this view and Revit will open that view up. Notice that it doesn't close the previous view. We now still have from parking area as a tab view and we can just cycle between those. If we want to navigate around this floor plane, we can use the mouse. So I'm going to start by being able to zoom in to a particular area. So I'd like to now um, have a closer look at the staircase in the top right hand corner. So I put my cursor over that staircase, roll the mouse wheel away from me, and you'll notice that Revit then zooms up on that particular building element. If I want to pan the view, I can hold down the middle mouse button, and then you can see I can pan. If we want to zoom to the extents of the view, we can just double click the mouse wheel and Revit will then zoom to the extents of the entire view. OK, we're now going to continue to navigate through some views. And rather than using the project browser, I'm going to use hyperlinks on things like elevation markers. Now we can see here that we have elevation markers representing the various different flanks of this building. So if I'd like to now take a look at the south facade, you can see we have this elevation marker here. Now to hyperlink to the view, I can just move my mouse over the arrow parts of the view and simply double click. And you'll now notice that Revit's opened up the south elevation. If we take a look on the right hand side, we can see that we have a number of levels displayed. Some of these levels have associated floor plans. So you can see the first four levels here have plans associated with them. That's why they're blue. And you can see the parapet does not currently have a plan. These blue symbols are hyperlinks, so if I now want to look at the roof plane, I can put my cursor over the blue symbol here and simply double click. And you can now see that Revit opens up the roof plane. Now while we're looking at the roof plane, you'll notice here that we have a section cutting through the skylights. So I'd like to now take a look at that section. So once again, I can just double click on the section head, notice it's blue, and Revit will then open up that view. Now before we go any further, let's just take a look at how many views we've got opened up across the top. So you can see I've got from parking area here, which was my original view. Now <clears throat> we can use keyboard shortcuts to actually cycle through these views. So if I want to go back through the views, I can hold down control, shift and tab. And you can see I can now start to go backwards through the views. And if I do control and tab, I'll move forwards through the views. If I decided that I wanted to close down these other views just to tidy up the display a bit, I could go to the view ribbon and on the view ribbon you'll notice we have the panel titled windows and here I could simply close the inactive views. And that leaves us now just with section uh, through main stair. Also notice in the project browser Revit will always make this view bold. So you can see under sections here we have this bold text section through main stair. If we look in our properties palette, we'll notice we have again a section through main stair shown here, and also we have the properties of the view. So you can see it's at 1 to 100, the detail level's fine, and so on. 
these uh, settings here are reflected down here on the view control toolbar. Now, everything you're seeing in this view is generated from the model elements. We're about to now look at some detailed views. So you can see over here, I have this uh, call out around here and I'm gonna double click on the call out and you can now see we're at one to 20. If we now take a look at the parapet, we'll double click on the call out again. And now you can see we're at one to 10. Now this view is a composite of 3D model elements and also 2D detail components. You'll also notice here that we have some leaders calling off some of these components here, and I have yet another detail view. If I open up the final detail in here, this is simply an AutoCAD drawing. So this is from a manufacturer's uh, catalog. And yeah, this is really good with Revit. You can bring in manufacturer's drawings and have those as part of the project documentation. And of course, now you can see the scale is one to two. Okay, so that's now uh, allowed us to have a look at some of the 2D views within Revit. Let's now open up a 3D view. So if we take a look now at the 3D views folder, you'll notice here that we have uh, the default 3D view, which is shown in curly brackets. I'm gonna go ahead and open that view up. Now the pan in and zooming is exactly the same. You can see here I can zoom in and zoom out. I can pan uh, just in the same way. If I want to orbit or rotate the view, I hold down the shift key and then hold down my middle mouse button and you can see I can orbit around the model. When you orbit around the model, it uses the centroid of the whole model itself. That's quite good if you zoomed all the way out like this and you just simply want to orbit around the whole view. But if I want to go ahead and look at a particular detail such as this door here, then what I'd need to do is select that element so it's in a selection set and then orbit around that object. And you can then see that becomes the center of the view. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Let's go to the opposite elevation of the building. And again here, you can see I've got another exit. If I select that, shift key down, middle mouse button, I can orbit around that component. Okay. Now, another really good thing with the 3D view is you can use the view cube here to quickly access specific views. So, of course, if I wanted a top-down view, I could do that. If I then want to rotate the view through 90 degrees, we can use the uh, icons up here. But more importantly, we can get isometric views from this. So you can see here, I can just use the view cube to actually obtain standard ISO views. If we want to have the model presented in a, a different method, we have visual styles down on the view control toolbar. So you can see this one's currently just using shaded, but if I wanted hidden line, of course I could show that. Uh, you can see here that we have wireframe, which would let us see all the way through the building model. And here we have things like consistent colors. So this one here doesn't differentiate between light and dark areas from sunlight. Of course, if I go back to shaded, then you can see we have the lighter side over here. Um, we'll look at the visualization tools later on, but we also have something called realistic, which would use um, realistic materials on the view. Before we get into that, we need to look at applying sections and views to this 3D model. So for example, you remember the uh, view we looked at, which was the section through the stairs. If I wanted to apply that to this 3D view here, I can right mouse click over the view cube, I can go to Orient to View, Sections, and here I can select Section Through Main Stair. And you'll see that Revit now prepares exactly the same view in 3D. The only difference is if you have a cranked or stepped section, it can't represent that, so you'll see it's a straight cut. But other than that, the section line is exactly where it would be in the view, and the depth is created for us. This type of view from uh, a building structures point of view is very useful because I can see the ceiling and then the zone that I've got to get my framing in. I can also see continuity of structures. So for example, if I didn't see a column below here, I'd need to plan for a transfer structure. Obviously I can see the structural openings that are required and so on. When you're ready to return back to the full view, you'll notice in the properties of this 3D view, under extents, we have a tick box by section box. If I simply uncheck that, you can see Revit then goes back to a full view. Okay, let's have a look at another type of uh, section here. We're going to now create our own section. So to do this, we'll go back to the O2 floor plan. 
And here we're going to cut our own section. So I'm going to cut a section in between grids 9 and 10. So to do this, we remain on the view ribbon and you can see here we have the section command. So let's go ahead and select that. In the properties palette, I'm just going to ensure in the type selector that I'm going to select building section. And here I'm going to start. So I just left click about here somewhere. And to make sure that I'm cutting this vertically through the view, I can hold down the shift key, which will force orthogonal drafting. And we'll terminate the section down here. You can now see with the section that we have this dotted blue line. This is the extents of the view. So if I want to um, crop this a little bit, I can use the shape handles on that dotted box. And I can also control the depth of section here. If I want to fine tune or move that section, I can just put my cursor over it. And you can see here I can drag that to a, a better location. So perhaps I wanted to actually cut through the staircase itself. And if I want to look in the opposite direction, you can see here we have this flip symbol, which will just reverse the direction that the section looks in. OK, so once we've done that, we're going to deselect the section. To do this, we just simply left click in the background of Revit. And then I'll double click on the section head. And here's our view. So, of course, views like this are brilliant to understand, again, structural zones where our framing is going to sit. Uh, clearly here we we'll want to be able to start to add uh, dimensions and, and so on. So for example, if I just wanted to take a measurement up here to see what space I've got, if I go up to the quick access toolbar, you can see I've got measure between two references. And what I'm going to do here is just take a measurement here and I can see I've nearly got 900 millimeters there. Again, if I wanted to see the structural opening, again, I could take a measurement here, 4,790. OK, so finally, if we want to visualize this section that we've just created in 3D, we'd go back to our 3D view, right mouse click on our view cube, orient to view, and you can see here we have sections. And notice here, section one is the view we've just created. So if we select that, yep, you can now see here we have that nice little breakout view just for our section one.